Reflection is the ability to get information about types at runtime. It enables us to access type-specific information that would normally only be available at compile time. So information like the size and the name of the type, whether it is a fundamental type or a trivially copyable type. There is much information that can only be gathered at compile time that could be useful to know at runtime. So this is the final result of today's video. Uh, we get all type information of the current program, uh, run over it and print its type information. So let's run it. So first of all is the matrix struct uh, with an ID of this, alignment of 36, I mean size of 36, alignment of 4, is fundamental, false, is floating point, false, is integral, false. Uh, trivially copyable, true. So double integer uh, vector tree, a transform component, and this actually did the here I check if it's a game component or if it has a game component constructor. Then I construct it, update it, render it, and that is what's happening here. So the game component, class transform component, gets instantiated, gets updated, and here the class render component gets instantiated and gets rendered. Okay, so we start with a new empty project. First thing we'll do is go into properties, and of course set it to at least C++17. Uh, I'll put it on 20, because it's the latest one. And if you want, you can also what I usually do is level 4 warnings and read warnings as errors. Yes, uh, just in case something, no, I make a mistake. The first thing a reflection system needs is a way to identify types. C++ already comes with a way to identify types using the type ID operator. Uh, if we run this program, we'll see that an integer has a hash of this and its name int. Unfortunately, this is quite limited information. Also, this hash that is given is not guaranteed to be the same between, uh, between invocations of the program. I've tested this and I haven't seen any difference, but just in case, we can come up with our own hashing method of getting an identifier for each type. So we'll create a new header file. This will contain the logic to turn a type into a string view. So this is why we needed C++17 is because of uh, the string view. Um, using string views we can in a const expression way get the, uh, the specific location of the type name inside of fun sig or pretty function. So these two macros are used to generate a string that is, contains the name of the function it is called in. Using some templates and some string view math, we can extract the name. And testing this out with some fundamental types, we get that they get printed. So this works with any user-defined type. So we're here we have a struct, a class, an enum, an enum class, and a union. So let's run it. And we have struct class enum, enum, and union. Next, we implement a hashing algorithm. This will take the string view and hash it to a 64-bit integer. This integer is always the same between programs as long as the original name of the type does not change. Uh, if we go to our main function again, uh, you see that I get the type IDs of the various types. I print them and they are uh, all different. I do it again and it will be the same. I also note that this is all done at compile time. So the string hashing is compile time. So here we have a const expression that reflects and it will compile. So here we go. So next we will create a new header file called type ID. This file will contain a struct called type info. This will basically contain all of the information that you might need in your program about a specific type. Um, it gets filled in in this create function where it just uses um, a templated 
function that will construct the variables. So the name will be called reflection type name t, the size, the size of, align, align of, and then it will return it. And we also have the type ID class. This is basically a proxy for um, a normal integer, so the hash of, a, of the type and its type information. Uh, so as you can see, it contains only one variable called ID, and it is used to map to type infos. So if you have this ID, you can get the type info out of it. We also need this templated static function to fill in the type information and put it inside of the hash map. We also do a quick test to see if there were any hash collisions, just in case, which is quite unlikely. We now go back to the main function and we register some types and then get all type information from that, that are currently stored and we will just go over them and print their information. So here we go. We have the enum test enum, which has a size of four and an alignment of four, the double, size eight, align eight, and so forth. Next, I made it possible to register the class before the main function. So in order to do this, we need to use uh, static variables. So static variables get, get initialized before the main function. We can use this to our advantage to call uh, a function inside of that constructor. So here we have a templated class, which has another private class defined in it. This class is actually the one that calls the register function. Um, the reason we do this is because this way you can only register a class once. So no matter how many um, variables of this exist, it, this inline static variable will only get instantiated once and will only get constructed once. So this function will only get constructed, uh, will only get called once for the lifetime of the, of the program. Then we just make a define. So this is normally what you have to do is write this out to uh, register an int, for example, but that's um, a bit complicated. So we just make a quick define to just do register type, put the type in, and it will um, spit out the necessary information. So let's test this out. So here we did the same, but instead of uh, registering it before the for function inside of the main function, we just put it anywhere else. And it will, this, these types will get registered before the main function gets called. So this is the first thing that will be executed if we get rid of this, just to make it clearer. So first thing that will get executed and it will still contain all of the information. So let's go. And here we go. Now it does not matter where you put this. If we put it before, it will still work. If we put it inside, uh, it will also work. Let's get rid of this. Um, this is just a static variable, so it does not matter where you put it. You could put it in the for loop. It will only register something once, and it's well, it's better if you put it outside. It looks better. What I also suggest you do is instead of using uh, a static unordered map, so this was a inline static before, you should create this so because you are working with static variables and static variables may get constructed before the other there's well there's no telling which one gets constructed first um, you can make it so that one gets initialized before the other um, this is a static variable that's that gets initialized the moment you go through this uh, code so for example, if we register the class or so register type ID, we first do get statics, which will register static data first and will construct this unordered map just in case this unordered map hasn't been initialized yet. And this is just as an extra safeguard to prevent undefined behavior. So now we can start adding more specific information. So here we have this enum, which is which will contain information about the type. So if it's a fundamental, if it's integral, if it's a floating point, and will get stored into this bit set. So 
So every type will have flags attached to it. And we also have this game component class where all the game components can inherit from. And we define a constructor for that. So we can check anytime if the class inherits from game uh, component, we can create this constructor for it. So in the create function of the type info, uh, we just add these lines. So we just check if it's trivially copyable using the std type traits and fill in that bit flag. We can also check if the type inherits from game component. In case it does, we fill this function with the constructor that will construct the type and return a pointer of game component. So here we use the reflection system to let the user decide which game object to create. It will then initialize it, update it, and render it. So let's have a look. Uh, you will be prompted to either press 0, 1, or to quit. So let's press 0 to create a transform component. It uh, initialized it, and it updated it. Okay, let's now do the render component, and voila. And to show how easy it is to make a new component, we just make a new C++ file, for example. Um, let's copy it from this. So it just includes the type ID, and then let's call this AI component, inherits from compon game component, and update the AI component. And here also AI component. Let's get rid of the delta time. And then AI component transform. Oh, this should still be float. Voila, let's run it. And here it is, it's already registered into the system. Nothing else. So let's now press 2 to create it. Initialize class AI component. It does this and it updates it and that's it. Thanks for watching. I will put the link to the source files on GitHub in the description below.